Okay, so we had calculus and dance, and I'm Cassie. And I'm Maddie. And so the first thing we're going to do is show you the math and dance, and it's the counting part. <laughs> so here you go. Dance is counted in like eight counts. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's, yep. That's the math and dance. Yep. That's, that's it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. So the reason we chose this topic was because we've both been into like we've always been in dance. We've both been it since we were three, and it's always been something we've loved, loved to do. So since we both shared something we liked, we decided to do it together. Um, but like history of dance. So dance has been around for like a long time, like really far back, and. When it first started, it was like rituals and they would like dance before like their gods and stuff. And then it's like evolved to many different types of dance, such as like the tango and the waltz. And then like the more common types of dance that we use like today would be like hip hop, ballet, tap, and jazz. And the top picture is like one of the ritual type of things. And then that's hip hop, but that'd be waltz, is what the top picture. Um, this is just kind of like a dance timeline to show you how it evolved over the years. In the 8th century BC, Greeks were doing spiritual dances, so they were just used to like talk to their gods and stuff. And then 16th and 17th century, ballet became a huge thing in France, so it was really popular, and that's where you see like all the popular ballets that are still known today. Um, 20th century, contemporary was started by... Isadora Duncan, like she didn't want to stick to just the ballet and stuff, she wanted to be able to express how she felt in different ways than just ballet, so she started like a different kind of dance. And then in the late 20th century, tap dance evolved from clogging, which was brought here by African Americans, so it just kind of shows how like it switched from more of like a traditional to a contemporary. Um, so these are just some fun facts, especially about tutus, which we're wearing today. And so you see there, that's a dancer from the Swan Lake, and that's like a very popular ballet production that happens. And pretty much everyone wears tutus, and to make one of their tutus, it takes like 100 yards of ruffles, and their ruffles are like all the different layers that make it stand out straight. And because their tutus and stuff have a whole bunch of like beading and designs and everything, it takes one person like 75 hours to make one of them. And obviously you can see there's like a lot of tutus that they have to make. So it's a pretty big expense. I think I saw that they're like at least $2,000 and for like one set of tutus. <laughs> so these are just some dance moves we thought we'd teach you guys. First one is the sign. Everyone can do them if they want. And then, <laughs> and then there's the cosine. And whatever. And there's the tangent, so you just like it. And it's a uh, 30 night if you've ever seen the movie. <laughs> and then there's the absolute value of X. And then you have X. And then the X, X squared. squared. X squared plus Y. And squared. that's like a typical ballet thing right here. So, math. <laughs> and then we have the square root of X. <laughs> square root of the finger of X. And then one half. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you don't know what you're doing, you get the crap. <laughs> 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 yep. So those are our math. Mathematical dance moves. All right, some of the math that is used in dance that we're gonna tell you about today is just the area under of a curve. So when a dancer is leaping, they make like a parabola. So we're gonna find the area under that curve. And then we also found the max height a dancer reaches at her top point of her leap. Okay. 
and then, so this is the area under the curve. It just shows how when a dancer takes off and then reaches her top points, the top of her parabola, and then down. So we found the area of what she covers. And by that, we integrated the equation. Well, our first, our equation for the dancer was 7 tangent 40x minus 16x squared plus 3.5. So then we took that and found where she started the leap, which would be 0 seconds, and where she finished the leap, and that was 0.367 seconds. So then we found, we plugged that in and integrated it from 0 to 0.365, which is the time it took her to leap. And then that came out to 1.416 feet squared. So the amount of area she kept covered while leaping was 1.416 feet squared. Um, when we're finding the mass height, um, you have to set the derivative of our function equal to zero so we can find the critical numbers. And then once we find them, we can plug that into the original equation and then that will give us like our maximum height. So like the critical numbers are like the time that she reached it. So then when we plug it in, we'll find like how high she was off the ground. And so again, we used our same equation and the 3.5 is like her hip height, so you like know like where it starts and stuff. And so we took the derivative, uh, we set it equal to zero, and then solved for x, which gave us our time that she was at her highest point, so like when she was flat in the picture. And then we plugged our 1.8 seconds into our function, and it gave us 4.039 feet is how high she's off the ground when she leaps, so she'd be about like right here-ish when she's in like full split in the air. And that's also when like, if you look at the tangent lines of a graph, that'd be like when it's horizontal, because it's at its relative max. Uh, this is just kind of the history of integration in the area under the curve. Like they said yesterday, it was Newton and I still can't say this. Well, being <laughs> in the late like 17th century, fought over who had it and stuff. And they realized that finding the area under the curve was using an infinite number of rectangles. So like you could do the Raymond sum. Like there's different ways to find it, but that's where you can. And then. The definition of the integral was given to us by Raymond, and it was f of x equals f of a minus f of b. There would be an integral, but I couldn't get it on my computer. <laughs> so, yeah. And then some other like applications or like facts about it. So the integration and the area under the curve can be like used in a lot of different ways to find like the area under like a kick or a leap or like all different sorts of dance moves. But in order to find like the relative x or min, like I said, the tangent line has to be horizontal and your sign changes. So as like the dancer like leaps this way, obviously she's like increasing positive and then as she gets her point, she's flat and then when she starts to come down it's negative or like That's it.